G'day guys. So you've just bought your first guitar and you don't know what to do with it. This little tutorial is going to help you get started. The first thing that I tell all my students is to make up a little sentence to help remind them of the string names. So this instrument has six. The first string is our thinnest string and it's an E. Next string up is a B, G, D, A, and then E from first to the sixth string. A little sentence you can use. Easter, bunny, gets drunk at Easter. Now, if you want to go from the top down, from the sixth string to the first string, and that would work better for your mind, you can use this little sentence. Eddie ate dynamite, good by Eddie. They're the two sentences I use for my students and they're both very effective. The one which I recommend you definitely use is the Easter Bunny one, just because it gives you reference of your first string to your sixth string in order from highest in pitch to lowest in pitch. Now, the next thing you really need to get right before you even start playing the instrument is your posture. So when we play the guitar, we wanna be relaxed. We wanna sit the curved, area of the instrument on the body on our right thigh and you want to drop your shoulders um, you want to sit up straight relax those shoulders and grip the guitar nice and light with your left hand and rest your forehand over the top of this part of the contour here where your right hand will now pivot off the body or float now, a lot of guitarists choose to float which means your wrist and your hand your picking hand is just floating it's not actually touching the guitar body itself. Another technique a lot of guys like to use is pivoting. So they might use their pinky to anchor or pivot off the body. And the third way to play is a combination of everything where you've got, you're kind of anchoring off the bridge. Some guys like to rest off the bridge and you're, you're pivoting as well with your pinky. And you can actually change between those different positions with your right hand. So they're the first things to really think about. From there, we want to know how to hold a pick correctly. So this little guy here. When we are holding a pick, you will create a C. You want to then place your pick right in front of that first joint of your index finger. Then your thumb goes over the top and grabs it. And there you have the correct way to hold a pick. So again, C shape, pick sits in front of the first joint of the index finger, thumb over the top. There we have it. Never hold a pick with two fingers like that. And don't hold a pick like this unless you're George Benson. In holding a pick with the correct technique, we then allow ourselves to be able to hybrid pick, which means we have the ability to play with our pick and our fingers. The next step with guitar is learning how to tune the instrument. On my pedal board, I have a Boss tuner. You don't need a floor tuner. Your iPhone has a number of apps you can choose to tune your instrument. So please just download a free app to tune your instrument. The first step with tuning an instrument is you want to check and memorize, make sure you memorize the names of your strings first. That's key. So Easter, Bunny gets drunk at Easter. Now, as you can see on my floor tuner, when it's in tune, it illuminates green. B, Bunny, G, gets, so that's slightly flat, so I want to twist the tuning peg a little bit. I'm going to go anti-clockwise on a six in line, um, and I'm going to go clockwise to detune it in pitch. So I'll give you an example. If my guitar's out of tune, see it's the G string is flat. Now I'm going to twist it anti-clockwise, and it's green. Now it's in tune. It's gone up in pitch. Check my D string. It's in pitch. Check my A string. 
it's in pitch. And check my E string. Now I'm in pitch. Now to check that everything sounds good, just check it with a chord. E minor, maybe a G chord. Something that's familiar. So you know how to tune a guitar. You know how to hold a pick. Now we need to look at our left hand and chords. I'm gonna give you guys some really easy hacks to playing some basic open chords with two fingers only. When we're fretting an instrument, particularly the guitar, we want to understand what each of these fingers correlate to with the numbers that are written on our chord chart. On a chord chart, you'll see the diagram is basically the guitar standing upright like this. You'll see a line that way, which represents the nut, and you'll see other lines going horizontally, which represents our frets. Usually you'll only see one to three frets within a chord chart, and then all the other lines going vertically down are your strings. From left will be your lowest or your sixth string in pitch, and to the right will be your thinnest string. With that in mind, we're gonna have a look at the E minor chord. Two fingers. So number one, with a circle around it, stands for our index finger. Number two, with a circle around it, stands for our middle finger. Number three, with a circle around it, stands for our ring finger. And four is our pinky. So E minor requires us to use our index finger and our middle finger. There's two ways you can play it. The most correct way to play E minor, and it will be seen in every single guitar book, is the index finger is placed on the A string or the fifth string on the second fret. And our middle finger is placed on the fourth string or the D string on the second fret. Now, what we need to make sure of is that we place the fingers as close as possible to the correlating fret, which is the second fret. Now, I know it's a little bit hard to get both those fingers directly next to that fret. The best technique we can have and the best sound we're gonna get out of our instrument is if we can get our fingers just behind the metal frets. So for E minor, we want our root finger to take that prime position because of the angle of our hand, he's gonna get the best advantage at the second fret. Our index finger is just gonna be directly above and he's kind of somewhere in between our first fret and our second fret. So you can almost have your finger on top of the fret. It's not gonna matter. In fact, it's gonna make it sound more intonated. So with that in mind, we fret those two fingers for our E minor chord and our thumb is gripped around the neck like this. There's two, there's two ways of gripping the neck. You'll see some guitarists put their thumb over the top, which is fine. This is a no-no for classical guitar technique. It's very much frowned upon, and it's, it's a requirement that your thumb is in fact behind the neck on a slight angle like this, as you can see. So you can see I've got a nice little curve here. It's not bent. You do not want to put all the pressure into that joint. You want to spread that pressure and that you want to use all your muscles in the palm of your hand to, to grip that guitar. So that's why that angle, that curve is super important. It allows our muscles to help leverage the pressure point. So with that in mind, I would practice doing both. I would practice with our thumb over the top for chords is fine. When we're playing scales, we wanna have our thumb on the back of the neck. Yeah, real important. When we're playing chords, however, we can, we can choose to have our thumb over the top. That is fine. As long as you're gripping the neck, you wanna make sure you're distributing all the pressure amongst your palm and your fingers. You don't want just your fingers doing all the work or the back of your hand doing all the work. You're not gonna get a great tone. So let's try it. So we wanna place those fingers there and give it a nice big strum. And for E minor, you can strum all six strings from the sixth string 
down to the E string. Now, there is another way, a hack, a chord hack for E minor. We can actually flip these fingers around. So now we have our root finger uh, on the A string and our, our index finger on the D string. What this allows us to do is it allows us to go for a song like Zombie by the Cranberries. We can go from our E minor chord and our index finger is already in the correct position for the next chord, which is a C major 7 chord for the two finger hack. So what I can do is I can go from E minor straight to C major 7. C major 7, we want to try to avoid our top string, even though E is the major third. For C major 7, because we're on two separate frets now, we can really afford to place our fingers as close as possible to those frets required. So our index finger is right behind that second fret. Our root finger is directly behind that third fret. And we want to strum from the root note, which is on our fifth string, our A string, and that will be C for this chord. And we give that a strum. Now the last piece of advice that we need for our chords, when we're strumming chords, we want to make sure that our fingers are standing up nice and tall on the fretboard. The knuckles are bent. So you can, I can almost stick my finger through there. And that, what that does is it stops us from muffling our other strings. If you don't stand them up nice and tall, you'll get this. You'll get these muffled mutes. And that's because your fingers are touching the other strings, which is muting the strings. So you wanna make sure your fingers are standing up nice and tall. You're directly behind each fret. You're holding the pick correctly. Your posture's good, you're relaxed, your shoulders are nice and relaxed, and you avoid the top string for the C major 7. There it is. Now, our next chord is going to be a technically a G6 chord. And a G6 chord is really simple. It's this shape on two different strings. We just move that shape directly up, and we have the third chord of Zombie, the G6 chord. Have it. For the G6 chord, we can strum all the strings. Finally, we're going to play what we call a slash chord or a D chord with F sharp in its bass. Now, this is actually considered the second inversion of the chord. That's getting into music theory. That's something that I will cover later on in other content. For now, this is a pretty, this is probably going to be the hardest chord to play out of the four chords because you have, you have to move your fingers to a different area. So we've, so far we've had E minor, C major seven, G six, D over F sharp. Now D over F sharp, our index finger is on the top string, second fret, and our root finger or our middle finger is placed on our third string this time, on the second fret. Now we can actually strum all the strings. Give us this open B and an E. It kind of sounds cool, it works. But if you can, try to avoid your second string and your first string and so just strum down to the third string. That's good practice for avoiding strings. I'd like you guys to practice one strum per measure or bar. So in music, songs are divided up into measures. And in each measure, it's usually in a time signature of 4-4. Four, four. So there's four beats in each measure. Now what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna play what we call a whole note strum or a semi-brave strum. And all that is is letting the chord ring out for four counts. So we strum on beat one of the measure and let it ring out for four counts. So after four, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. 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 Now, the next subdivision would be halving that, which would be a half note or a minimum. 
Let's try that. So we'll be strumming on beats one and three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The next subdivision will be a crotchet or a quarter note, which is strumming on every single beat. After four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And our final subdivision as a beginner will be quavers or eighth notes. We count this as, instead of counting like a dancer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, musicians will count and in between one, two, three, four, like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... There you have it. Now, if you want to go one step further with this and you're just finding that too easy, we want to start to introduce some accenting. Now, a drummer will accent on beats two and four because that's our backbeat on the snare drum. We want to do that when we play quavers with this song. We want to accent beats two and four. So that sounds like this. One and two and three and four. Have it. Happy picking.